A very good morning and welcome to this edition of Morning at NTV's Big Stories, the 26th day of April 2017. And this morning we're waking up to an interesting conversation around about the goings on in our metropolis, which is Kampala. On the 14th of April 2017, the contract of the Executive Director of Kampala Capital City Authority was extended for another three years, bringing an end to what many had started to speculate that perhaps this may not be accepted. Good enough, she did accept. This morning on The Big Story, we are privileged to have her on the dice to tell us, one, days before that she had been quoted in some sections of the press saying that if only she knew what, contained, what was contained in the docket of being Executive Director of Kampala Capital City Authority, she possibly would not have taken the appointment. Now the contract is up for renewal, it is renewed, and she accepts it. So, what changed? What plans does she have to make Kampala a better place? And of course, it's so important to look back at the last three years of her tenure and celebrate, if at all, or possibly, despite her achievements or the absence of which. And that will be on the big story this morning. Stay with us. Executive Director Jennifer Musisi. Good morning, Simon. You're looking fresh, up with an extra bounce in your state. As Tell usual. Us more. It's as usual. Mm -hmm. There was a time, I must admit, where I thought the gas had been deflated from the body. Mm. It, it has been a challenging um, six years mm -hmm. at times, uh, but also very exciting a lot of times. Let's look at the six years on a scale of zero to ten, mm. where zero is heartbreaking, mm. bad performance and all sorts of things mm. to you as an individual. Mm. And 10 is an excellent, uh, excellent tenure for which you'd only be happy to do again. Mm -hmm. Where do you rank yourself before we start our conversation? Mm, 6.5. 6.5. Yeah. Is that being so modest or are you simply being mean? I think I'm being realistic because the what we've been doing the last six years is basically restarting the city administration mm -hmm and providing basic, the basics of a city. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we're making uh, the improvements, for example, the infrastructure, uh, the lighting, the cleaning of the city, the revenue collection, the um, administrative structure, the, um, the, the, the technical teams, the improved service delivery, uh, people are taking them as privileges and they are saying this is great and you're doing a great job but mm. basically that's what city administrations are supposed to do absolutely it's, it's what people are supposed to get when they're in the capital city so what we've done in the last six years is basically do the basics lay a good foundation for actual transformation of the capital city we are nowhere near where other capital cities should be or where would be had this transformation perhaps started much 25 earlier. years or 20 years ago, 15 years ago. So um, I'm, I'm happy that we've set solid foundations in fi financial management, in revenue collection. Waste in disposal. The, I'm sorry, waste disposal. Mm -hmm. um, compliance levels have gone up. And basically getting people to take um, city administration as a serious, uh, a serious um, thing, but also... Um, expose people to what a capital city should be. Well, on the whole, it yes. looks all nice and rosy, but in there, getting down to the little nitty-gritties, yes. we've seen as much tears as have been laughter from yes. your administration. Yes. We've had a section of the population in the city, they prefer to call themselves the urban poor, yeah. those struggling women trying to vend a few yeah. uh, legumes, roast legumes on the streets, yeah. uh, ripe bananas and other fruits, mm. going about their businesses as yeah. it were, now unable to perhaps do so. Mm. In fact, even so much as recent, we had those who are not trading in anything, but who are just out menacing around and preaching the word of God, also coming in to face the brunt of your strict administration to rid the city of any little chaps and all. And one asks the question, what kind of city do you want? One that doesn't accommodate all and is only a privilege of a few um, well-to-do, hard-nosed people. What kind of city do you want Kampala to be? What kind of city was Kampala planned to be? Mm -hmm. I think it should be the question. Uh, the regulations, the ordinances, the laws mm -hmm. that we've been implementing since we came have been in place for decades. Um, it's just that they've never been implemented, so people didn't know about them. 
So when we start implementing them, for example, the waste ordinance, mm. uh, 2010, people didn't even know about it. The um, the 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 order, uh, the ordinance regulating activities on the streets, including everything street on the streets, uh, the vending, the um, uh, public address systems on the streets, the advertising, the mobile activations, all those laws. That's I think a 2006 ordinance. Mm -hmm. People think we have um, we written, written new law. We have actually not written any new law since we came, or any new ordinances really. These are laws and ordinances that have been on the shelves for decades, unattended to, unimplemented. So that's why people think they're new, but they're actually what they wanted the city to be. I was not there when these laws and ordinances were made. Yours is just Not important. even the KCCA Act. I wasn't there. I wasn't even actively involved. We'll have a yeah. conversation especially yeah. with, uh, about those who were there and now think that your style of leadership is quite not exactly what they anticipated when they were making these laws. But that's a conversation that we'll have mm. later in the program. Let's look at basic service delivery mm. as a, an, a city authority. Of course, mm. health and education come at the fore. We've had schools and we continue to have schools that are KCCA run previously under KCC. Mm. We also had medical facilities that are in town. We know that there's been some tremendous steps taken in that mm. direction of improving our health mm. uh, facilities, but that has still not yet come to 100% fruition. Mm. But how are we progressing on the front of social services? Well, doing much, much better mm. than we were in the beginning. Um, most of the time it comes down to two things. One, um, efficiency. Mm -hmm. Uh, manage management efficiency and capacity, but also funding. Uh, take the example of the um, primary schools. We have um, 79 primary schools, UPE, in the country, in the city. Uh, we have a population of over 80,000 students mm -hmm. in the schools. These are schools that are supposed to provide free education. For the last so many decades, they become dilapidated, run down, basically left to rot. Mm -hmm. So we've been working to restart, repair the infrastructure, provide furniture, put up computers. There are schools where there's one computer, population of 600, one old computer, desktop for uh, everything. Perhaps in the this master's kid, office. Yes, and it's the master's office, the headmaster's computer, the exam computer, everything. How do these kids even have a chance in life? Mm -hmm. You know, kids now in pre-primary know how to operate the computer called a mobile phone. Mm -hmm. But these are the kids they're going to compete with in P7 and S4 and L11 University. So we have been trying to restart, get computer labs in place. But also for UPE, um, government has hundreds and hundreds of schools across the country. Therefore, the budget is overstretched. We get um, 10,000 shillings per child per year as the government contribution. Indeed, I was coming so to that. How that can financing for many of these yes. projects is going to be very difficult yes. even in the years to come, yes. simply because the government pass is constrained. Yes. But we've also seen you carry out some strategic uh, partnerships with the private sector. Yeah. We've seen you partnering with MTN, for example, on and, all sorts, of other, and all yeah. sorts of other people yes. for these services. How is that going about? Yes, so what, I'm, what I uh, was explaining is that we've been able to make changes in the schools, renovate them, and do all these things that we're doing. Because we realize that the government pass is constrained, mm -hmm. so we have been reaching out to uh, private sector, to businesses, to international organizations, religious organizations, individuals, and asking them to help out with our schools, corporate entities. Uh, you've seen the runs, the fundraisers, the marathons, the, the ac all the acti activities that have taken place to support our schools. Fortunately, um, if you build a reputation of accountability and integrity as an institution, mm -hmm. um, accountability for the funds that are given to you, then the supporters or partners have the confidence to invest in you in terms of helping in these areas. And we that you have benefited that from. We have benefited Sorry, I must cut you short yeah. there, but let's mm. look at what an ordinary citizen in a city would be looking out for mm -hmm. and what your next three years promise to deliver to them. Yeah. Talk about, you know, organized commercial places, markets and all Hospital that, properly gazetted. Yeah. Uh -huh. We're talking about an efficient and seamless transport system, both for those with private cars, those who are able to cycle, yeah. and those who possibly would want to use public means. Yeah. We are looking at a city that's devoid of pollution that can easily be avoided. Mm. What 
are those some of your top priorities in the next three years? Because First of all, mm -hmm. uh, I think people need to understand that the problems of Uganda cannot be solved by Kampala alone. The problems of unemployment, problems of workspaces, problems of poverty, problems, the, the general problems that we have as a nation mm -hmm. cannot be solved by Kampala alone. They, have been, they can only be addressed if there's a national solution, which I see government is working on in different aspects mm -hmm. to improve people's livelihoods and, 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 and facilities and um, service delivery across the country. Mm -hmm. So the challenge we are having right now is the um, huge population and the influx of population into Kampala looking for opportunities. Even if we build 300 markets a year, if we had the space, mm -hmm. we'd not be able to accommodate all the people who need market space. If we expanded the parking and built parking facilities and did all these things that we should be doing as a capital city, we cannot accommodate the need because of the huge... We have 4.5 plus million, two people. million people in Kampala in that day. At night, uh, it goes down to about just over two, 2 million because people don't sleep in Kampala. And that we depends have to on which night. If it's a Friday yes. night, we possibly are all in the city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what happens is that as peop that is the, the mobility, the number of people coming in means a very efficient transport system, which cases we cannot, we cannot afford say, to buy city buses yet. So we have, we're looking at concessionaires, we're looking at PPPs and that kind of thing. Um, the parking space is constrained and all that. But what we are doing, much as those challenges remain, what we're doing and our plan going forward mm -hmm. is we're going to focus even more on building on particular areas, one, infrastructure development. We've seen a bit of that, but how yes. is it rolling? How is it's it rolling, rolling out? out. So far, uh, we've done almost 200 kilometers of new roads in the last six years. New roads or yes. you have simply... New roads, rebuilding. For uh, example, existing roads and you make them better. Existing not breaking new roads, you break up the road. You actually break up the road, recycle yeah. the road, mm -hmm. widen it, put drainages, put lighting, put greening, put walkways where there's space. And cycling. Path. And cycling paths where there's space, like Ginger Road, Kabaka and Jagal and a few others. Mm -hmm. um, Ginger Road is the widest road in the country, six lanes. Wow. walkways, bicycle lanes and all that. But you can only do that where there is space. So what we're doing right now, we're going to do over um, over 100 kilometers of new roads coming through the Kidi project and others. And that's but when I refer to my ongoing road construction project yeah, just uh, hang on. from your website. So the congestion will be addressed when the roads are wider, roundabouts are removed and signalized. Um, the um, junctions are wider so that the traffic flow is easier and the traffic is managed electronically. That's what we're Madame working on. Madam Edi, that mm. sounds very good when yeah. you're making the promises. But I think city dwellers have mm. a concern with regard to the actual time of execution. And you know that I always bring this conversation yeah. of roads back to my road at home. Robert Mugabe Road. Uh, one in point Bokoto? No, it is in Mbuya. Mbuya. 1.8 kilometers. Mm. It is right here on your list. Mm. Should have been mobilized. The contract should have been mobilized in June of last year, mm -hmm. and the road should have been completed on December the 17th of this year. Yes. But it is now April, and the mobilization hasn't been done. And this can be said of other places where they have waited for mobilization upon your own promise. This hasn't come to pass. What are the challenges you face in doing what? The you challenges, promise? including Robert Mugabe. Mm. We make a plan. Mm -hmm. We make a plan. That's what you have. Exactly right here. Um, we make a budget. If I do not get the budget that I need from government, mm -hmm. or if it's a uh, development partner supported project and the funds are not released in the time we anticipated, mm -hmm. there is no way we can do the roads. You sort of need money to do infrastructure. Mm -hmm. You need money to compensate, say, if you're buying somebody's land, you need money to pay the contractors even to start. Without so with Secondly, so the, the other challenge is money. Is mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. The other one is that because we don't have enough money, we cannot compensate. Say if we're doing your road and we come and say, uh, uh, Simon, can we take th three meters out of your land to build a walkway and put lights on your street and your neighbor and so on? That involves hundreds of people. We are telling them, if we were to pay for the three meters for each one of you, 
half the budget we have would go into that and the road would not be done. So for the good of you, mm -hmm. the residents, can you give up these meters so that we can do the road? Make your road safer, put Three up your rent, put up your value. Three meters into my home is the entire household, <laughs> so <laughs> clearly you'll be For doing some nothing. people, and just, that's just for an example, mm -hmm. two meters, three meters. Fortunately, people have begun to appreciate that. Okay. And they're now giving us land without us compensating, and, th and we're doing the roads. So fact, all factors remaining constant, mm -hmm. the money being available, the residents being cooperative, and sometimes the contractors don't do what they're supposed to do in time. That's why we fire them. Mm. Um, but for a lot of other projects that we're working on, we are on time. But there are also things that we can't control, like the weather. If it's raining like it is now, mm -hmm. we cannot come and sort of, sort of dig up your road because you'll then be marooned until the rain is well, on your usually road. the digging up happens in that time. But I'll spare yeah. that for your director yeah. of infrastructure when yeah. I have the moment. Now I have to touch on everything with you because simply I have the executive director with myself. Yeah. What about your interagency relations? For example, with the National Environment Management Authority, mm -hmm. when it comes to issues, say, noise pollution mm -hmm. and other forms of pollution and degradation of natural resources around mm -hmm. the city, yeah. you seem to have performed dismally. In my view, in that regard, wetlands continue to be uh, consumed by illicit developments mm -hmm. as you watch on. We have m uh, mushrooming, we went to churches, menacing all of our neighborhoods. We've got factories being set up in places that are otherwise residential areas and not industrial gazetted parks. And that all happens under your very stern watch. Why? Number one, um, I think because KCCA is KCCA, uh, people expect us to do other agencies' work. Mm -hmm. uh, taking the example of environment, mm -hmm. um, wetland, uh, wetlands, and everything, the primary, uh, the principal um, agency is NEMA. We support NEMA in terms of the physical planning. We do not approve plans in wetlands, for example, mm -hmm. or reserve areas. But the protection, they have an environmental police, NEMA, mm -hmm. they have all sorts of laws that enable them to regulate those areas. But the relationship, we have been working with them, and that relationship has grown. So there are agencies that lead, KCCS supports in our technical aspects. Uh, the other thing is the mushrooming of different facilities everywhere. We have something called the Greater Kampala Physical Development Plan mm -hmm. that was funded by the World Bank almost five years ago, completed. It is a plan of the layout of Kampala what and the Greater where? Kampala, what should be where, which hospitals should, where you should put hospitals, where you should put schools, where you should put roads, where you should put... Affecting the greater and and Kampala, mm -hmm. satellite cities so people don't have to come into Kampala, uh, and all that. It's a plan. Now, to implement that plan, I need money, billions of shillings, because we have to draw up detailed neighborhood plans. That means I will take an area like... Um, Minister's Village, for example. Let's use that. No, Minister's Village was already planned. Mm -hmm. It's a planned area with all the infrastructure. So Can that was a national housing... No, 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 no. It, it's fine. Okay. But there are areas that people just build, however, wherever. So Absolutely. there's no plan to guide them. Mm -hmm. To do that, we have to draw up detailed neighborhood plans. Mm -hmm. That is a very expensive exercise for the whole country, for the whole city. Uh, it's funding that we've been looking for, both internally and externally. Tell me something. Which we haven't yet got. So you when we have get plans. It, just listen. Uh -huh. When we get the um, the funding we will be able to now draw up the details. So if you bring your plan for a hospital or a nightclub or a casino, I will tell you I will not approve this plan because right next to it we are planning a hospital or a school. And I will have the legal basis in the no. plan. But right now you challenge me and say, why can't I build a casino next to a school? I'll say, well, because morally or whatever, good neighbor, I don't and have that it. doesn't have concrete. So that is the challenge. We need funding to implement that plan. Are we able to plan. implement all these plans and all that? For example, you who's got yeah. a fixed tenure of three years mm -hmm. on your new contract, mm. perhaps it will be improved, who knows. But we seem to have wonderful plans and are heavily constrained in mm. the execution. Yeah. So what should the city dwellers are watching you this morning take in terms of benefit? Is the funding uh, coming in in such a way that you see light at the end of the tunnel, or are we in a hopeless lamenting I, I, situation? Do I sound like I'm lamenting? It looks like. I mean, on no, terms I'm, of I'm, money, I'm, you seem I'm to I'm be... I'm being realistic. Mm -hmm. I, I, 
I am one of those few people who do not promise you things that I will not do. Mm. Uh, other people do. They give you promises and then nothing happens. I will promise. I will ask you for names, but I will, pro <laughs> <laughs> I will promise only what I know I will achieve. And realistically speaking, um, we cannot implement, these projects are expensive projects, we cannot implement them without money. We have got a lot of money from government, development partners. I spend a lot of my time presenting proposals internationally to agencies and governments and um, all sorts of places, mm -hmm. and they have given us a lot of money. But it's not enough for the things that we need to do. We need to raise our revenue. That's why we're revaluing all your properties. So we're going to come to you with a bill to pay more for your properties, and that's money coming into our coffers, over 30 billion a year. That's our As always, of course, these new yes. novel ideas from your side yes. are received with a lot of negative That's statement. why I'm telling you now, mm -hmm. if you pay your revenue, mm -hmm. if you pay your property tax, if you pay your hotel tax, if you pay your trade licenses, I'll do more roads, I'll do more lights, I'll do more schools and hospitals. So it's got to be all of us contributing. Both if ways. the money comes in, we have the capacity to transform this city according to the plan that we have. If we have less interference all around and, and that's what projects I was coming moving, to, especially we'll when it comes to political to interference. Yeah, we'll be able to do more. Because but lots of I times when you go those. to implement a certain project, yeah. you are hurting some people who have act living from the disorder, from the status quo. Yeah. You are changing the status quo. Yeah. And many of these take their appeals to forces that are perhaps higher than you. Yeah. They go to media, which perhaps influences the way you continue to well, enforce. Well, he's not they actually informed. Give Pardon? it to them. But they made Many times they don't have the adequate information. Well, but at least they are able to make yeah. that noise that influences whether yeah. or not you negate on your activities yeah. or not. They run to other political actors. They yeah. go to the president. The, you, you can't enforce much of those things. How much of that interference comes to you and what thick skin do you have to wade through it in the next three years? I'd perhaps look at it as what are we focusing on? Mm. Um, at the end of the day, the job has to be done. The services have to be delivered. Mm -hmm. um, fortunately, our law, uh, the KCCA law, defines responsibilities. Uh, my responsibility is technical work, mm -hmm. running the technical team, putting it together, getting it to work, delivering results, accounting for the money, collecting the money, and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, so the focus uh, the next three years is basically technical f in terms of improving uh, the economic uh, growth and environment of the city by improving infrastructure, getting the revenue up, keep making the plans. But like making I the said, plans that as we, we do all this, people are affected. You're making yes. an omelette, we want it, yes, but you're breaking eggs. Yes. And the complaint has been, especially mm. by the political arm of KCCA, the Lord mm. Mayor and his councillors, the question has been, as you make your omelette, why break the eggs the way you do? You're not people-centered. You don't have empathy. You evict people from swatches of land only for you to put up, you know. For example, we have all forgotten that there were people trading along the Bukoto Chira Road, Road Bukoto Road, yes. making beds and having kiosks and all that. And bars. And bars, yes. for that matter. Yes. When you chest them away, this po we have no idea where they are and what tears they are mm. crying. And at the moment of eviction, there is always that cry in you. That's why I was asking, what do you have in terms of thick skin to meet that, mitigate it, and go ahead with your projects? Or do you just say, bulldoze, no, let's I, move? I no, think, I think politicians, campalans, and general people who just watch and say, make comments, need to ask themselves, what do we actually want? Mm -hmm. uh, I get so sick and tired of people comparing Kampala to other cities. Of course. And I tell, challenge them to find out why, what has happened in that city to make it what it is. There is compliance, there is unity in direction, there is patriotism, there is a desire to... They love their country and, and their cities. And there is brute force in and the event is, of yes. resistance. I mean, my mother was a disciplinarian. Uh, she was just such a strict lady. And sometimes I thought she was my stepmother. Because she was so strict, she would punish us. She, she never spared the road. She never spared the road and, and <laughs> made, me make, made me wake up at 6 a.m. 
whether it's a Saturday or Sunday, just get up and get into your brain and then you start thinking. So just get out of bed. She was a disciplinarian, a hard worker, everything. She made me learn everything. At the time, I was very pained and aggrieved because I was missing out on a lot of fun. I am so thankful to that lady. I wish she was here today to see where I am because of the discipline that she installed in me. So that is the, the same the thing for Kampala. Yes. Basi Morgan. You have to no 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 no. <laughs> but you have to break the eggs if you want an omelet. The people that shouted most about Bukoto are sending us all sorts of appreciation messages for that street. They are saying it's like travelling in, 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 in an aeroplane and you're moving from first class to economy because mm. we haven't yet done Bukot, the rest of Bukot, we are, which we are going to do. So people have to be ready to pay a bit of the price. To get the good thing. To get the good thing. As we thing. conclude this yes. program, and I'm afraid yes. time is not an island on our side, yes. we obviously cannot leave this program without touching on your interpersonal relations and how you organize the whole workings about at City Hall. Mm -hmm. You and the Lord Mayor in times gone by were certainly more like water mm -hmm. and oil, mm -hmm. not quite mixing yes. in as much as you're in the same container. Mm -hmm. That seems to have shifted to the Minister of Kampala. They seem to be, you know, water and oil. And mm. you, you seem to be the jar in which the oil and water are simply not mixing. Mm. What exactly is happening at City Hall in as, much, uh, in as far as interpersonal relations of the top administrate, uh, administrators on either side of the coin is concerned? Because that, we mm. fear, has a direct impact on service delivery and mm. how KCCA is able to execute its mandate. I don't have a personal relationship with the other m leaders as such. For me, personal relationship means personal relationship. Friend. I have a working relationship, mm. a legal relationship. They have a role, I have a role. I think I'm doing my work. You need to ask them when you invite them if they are doing their they role. They normally come here? Yeah. Yes, I, I, I will not speak for them. So far, I am focusing on my team, accounting for them, aligning them, disciplining them, setting programs, looking for money, accounting for the money, making Kampala better for the people that use it and live in it. That's my focus. I'm not a politician. I don't want to go that direction. You will ask them when they come. But you're going to see the results that come, which we can account for as technical people. Wow. Interference is notwithstanding. We will deliver as much as we can to the best of our efforts going forward. There are challenges and there are mishaps and there are things like that. We've made some mistakes in the past. We are working to correct them. For example? The way we do our work. For example, the um, sensitization of people sometimes. The way our enforcement people handle uh, people. The way the complaints start coming. The mm -hmm. We've made some mistakes that delays the failure to communicate. On do something. I get an apology from your side? I, 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 I apologize all the time. I do. Look, the high handedness of the boys in yellow and black yes. and the girls for that matter. I, is I, I out keep, of the way. as a leader, you have got to take the flak and apologize, accept responsibility. I have accepted responsibility many times when things go wrong. But mm. accept the responsibility in public, go to the background, and whip my staff into action. I fire them, I discipline them, I align them, I demote them, I suspend them. You promote them? Or you I them? promote the ones that are doing a good job, I demote the ones that are not. I, I flush out the system when I need to flush the system, but I also need to protect them, enable to allow them to work. So sometimes I take the, f many times I take the flag, but I also take the credit. So that they are empowered. So enough. that they are empowered. I take you back where we mm. started so that we can conclude properly. Yes. You were quoted as saying, if only you knew what was in that package of executive mm. director, mm -hmm. you possibly would not have taken that appointment. Yeah. What have you seen in the last six years that made you come to that conclusion? And then, of course, eventually, what made you change your mind to, re to accept the renewed contract? Why am I not surprised you're asking? <laughs> um, I am glad that you yeah, expect this. But um, <laughs> that's the truth. It's like if, if, if God told us, the challenges would meet in our lives and we had a choice at birth. I think some people would say, please, let me not be born. <coughs> but as you go along, he helps you to overcome them. overcome them and learn from them. Had I known, true, I, I did not ever imagine what it would involve doing this job. What has been your hardest, the, the, the hardest hurdle? The hardest hurdle has been the impact on my personal life. Uh, my family life, um, my, my, uh, me as a person, as a leader, I wa I'm a 
naturally a very private person. Um, I don't have any enemies. I've never been to court on any matter. I've never had any flag thrown at me. I've always been a leader from right from P1. Mm -hmm. I've been a leader throughout up to now. I'd never had the kind of issues, the accusations, the court cases, the lies, the people just making you look bad and also that you, you are unable to jog the streets when you yeah, want to without want people to turning jog. i used to jog five kilometers without a problem in the morning i used to now if you must jog you must be in the middle of six every you know, men yeah and, and every, everywhere you pass people think oh she's coming to arrest somebody you're coming to demolish i'm just <laughs> taking exercise so the restriction of course the personal threats the personal i've had record number of death threats you're kidding. Oh, yes. Uh, you know, recently I had two or three, I think. But it's part of the... They came by phone? Or someone walks up to you They come by all means. They'll come by phone, by letter, by text, on radio. You know, pub someone goes on public media and asks people to shoot you. And no one takes action. People buy a coffin with your name and parade it down the street and no one takes action. Uh, people do all sorts of things. No one seems to be bothered. It's part of the package. I didn't ask for it. But over the years, I have learned to put my trust in God because that's the only way you can remain sane. And for you to accept and put to pen to paper with yeah. this new contract, yes. it was after a heavy church service or an intercession with God, <laughs> or it was simply looking at, okay, well, <coughs> maybe getting death threats, maybe working overtime, but when I look at the salary dropping on my account, when I look at the security meter around me, and the fact that I walk into a room and everybody turns around, what is it that motivated you really to say, I do this again? Uh, first of all, uh, my motivation has never been money. I was making more money before I came to KCC. You're kidding me. Oh, yes. I have lost, I know I have lost so much money being in this job. One, because I cannot do anything other than this, other than this job. Mm. I wake up at 3.30, start working on my computer, start doing all the things I need to do. I'm in office very, very early in the morning. Sometimes I leave at 9, at 8, at 7. It's crazy. Um, I have no time. I have no life. I have for the things that I would want to do, business, investments. I have a very good business mind. The mind is now occupied by sorting out garbage, vendors, issues. And Find the little space yeah. for the word Robert yeah. Mugabe. Robert. So, it's yeah. so it's, it's going to be fixed. It's part of our problem. Prob and everybody wants Since a new the last five years, So you know? the, the, the price that you pay for this job, yeah. even in terms, you know, at the end of the day, people, you know, people have this, I don't know where they got it from, that I get 46 million shillings with, with all sorts of benefits. And I'm saying, I wish I got 46 million shillings because I don't. But even if I did, it's not, sometimes it's not worth it. Many times it's not worth then it. Then what made you put so pen to paper? So what made me accept to stay is a process, a very detailed negotiation, not negotiation, discussion. Um, With the appointing authority. Pointing out why I was leaving and pointing out what would make me consider staying. And I think we are reaching or reached, made some agreements and compromises. But also, the other thing that was very painful for me is that I was going to leave um, work that I had started incomplete and then perhaps look back and see we could have done that better. better. Oh. Um, I did not stay because of lack of opportunities. There were so many opportunities. I've had to now um, draw back on your draw back on some of the almost order. commitments uh, and also explain and try to convince my family that we needed to continue paying the price of my job for Another a few three more years. years because it's tough on them. At the it's end really of the three years, it will be nine years. Why don't you convince them to make it just ten so that you have a proper solid figure? I'll take the three. After the three years, let's just now speak 
three years from today, yeah. when you close your eyes, what would you want to be remembered as having done for Kampala? And I think that should be your driving force. I already have a lot that I will be remembered for mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the things that last. The infrastructure, the institution, the, the institution we have set up from scratch, the change of attitude towards the city administration, the mm -hmm. improved people's lives, the improved livelihoods, the agricultural resources center, the employment center, the concrete yard, the hospitals, the lives we've saved. You know, we've done a lot of things uh, in the city in terms of uh, service delivery and facilities. Uh, those are things that will last way, way, way beyond my, my life. I must also add one thing yes. to you just for the benefit of yeah. your own knowledge of what we think about you. Yeah. I think we remember you as the lady that came as hard as nails. Thank you. Do you sometimes think that you're as hard as nails? I think I get my job done, but I'm actually not... I'm not a callous person. I think I'm a very, I'm a very kind person. If you know me, mm -hmm. as you know me, uh, I'm very sympathetic. But I also need to get the job done. I do, I'm not. A, I can't stand nonsense and excuses. And um, I, I need to get the job done. So if I need to get the job done and get compliance, it doesn't matter how high, how low, how connected, how. I've got to get the job done. So I better put it. a cup to mm. this, because yeah. when she begins to get yeah. down to the emotional part <laughs> and the personal <laughs> self, I get moved and carried away. Even when I <laughs> had promised fire and brimstone to her, <laughs> as we have this conversation on the capital city, uh, because I'm one of yeah. those city residents who believe yeah. that given your potential, yeah. given your education, given yeah. your exposure, and given yeah. the contacts you've been able to make, and the yeah. political will from the head of state, I think you could have done a lot better. But I'm glad that you're looking at the next three years as those years to redeem what has not been done better. And like you said, processes that you started, you couldn't see them go to waste. You're coming to tighten the nuts, fasten the nuts and bolts, and make this a better living place. We can only wish you the very best. And of course, you know that it's always open this table for us to have this conversation. And without a doubt, in the next six months, we should be back here to have a conversation, taking on from here to see how the next six months will have played out for you in your new contract. I'd just like to say that the issues of Kampala, the problems of Kampala, cannot be solved by Jane Kamsi alone. Mm. You, the residents, the taxpayers, the government, the politicians have got to play your part. Otherwise, we'll not get to where we want to get to. That's a very pregnant yeah. statement. Whatever it is, you really need to yeah. unpack it as an individual yeah. and get to see what contribution you are making. Like yeah. the uh, old legendary American president that is widely yeah. quoted for having said, yeah. do not ask what the union can do for you, ask what you can do, do for the union. Exactly. So for Kampala, it looks like it's the same thing. The executive director yeah. does ask us not to ask what she and her administration can do for us, but what we as city dwellers can, can do yeah. for the city to make it a better living place for ourselves, yeah. our children and their children. Mm -hmm. Have a wonderful morning. It's been a pleasure having you watching through and listening to this conversation. I can't thank the executive director more for taking time off our very busy schedule to be with us. And like we say, we'll keep the hand on the pulse to keep monitoring you with a clean hawk eye view of your activities. And after do your all, part. Exactly. We do our part and you do your part, but we hold each other to the best levels of accountability and the best levels of scrutiny so that at the end of the day, we effectively and without bias judge each other and know who faulted where in this long journey that we're taking together. Exactly. Thank you once again. Thank you. And thank you, our viewers. We'll take thank a you break. for having me. When we return, it's more quality programming here on Morning at NTV. Stay with us. Good morning.